What's going on guys? Welcome back to Watch With Us. Uh, today I'm here with John Keel and I am Anthony Kozlowski and we're going to be doing Ask Us Anything. So you give us the questions and we tackle them this right is, here. This is our second Ask Us Anything. Yes, yes. So we do. We are getting questions for some of the other contributors mm -hmm. that we have to coordinate with them to actually film their answers. Uh, but you and I took the ones that were specific to us yep. or general questions right. for the team. Exactly. Uh, or at least a few of them because we did get a few more than just what's here. Yeah, and yeah. we've been we've been getting in a good amount. Just. Keep sending them over. It's a lot of fun to film in, and we love uh, we and love hearing about what you guys want to know. Yeah, and some of the some of the questions are real short, and and like yeah. you know, kind of pop. I, I like that. It kind of gives us you know gives the idea of what we can talk about. Um, wrist yeah, check wrist before we go. Check. What do you got? Um, wearing my G Shock today. This is the GMWB. Uh, it's the full metal, the steel case. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, rocking it with the rubber strap right now. Honestly, sometimes you just you just want to wear a real basic watch, and uh, so I love it. It's 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 just super versatile and uh, comfortable. I've so got one not? too, so I, you know, to me it reminded me of my childhood, so that's why I got it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's one of my favorites from the G-Shock collection. Cool. What, what, are you, what are you rocking? I'm going old school kind of, or whatever you call it. I'm, I'm wearing the Swatch System 51. This one, uh, pretty interesting. When when I left my, my job back a handful of years ago to start my own businesses, um, this was a gift from one of my friends. He bought this on the very, that day, that the System 51s came out. Mm. The day the System 51 sold yeah, for the very say, first time ever. That's one of the original. One of the ones, first, right? Yeah, one of the first ones. And uh, he, he was going, he's going to be in Manhattan. And he went to the Swatch Boutique in, uh, I think it was in Times Square. Yeah. And picked it up like the day they were introduced. So, and I, I have to be honest, I think I've worn it five times since then. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, once in a while I just want to mix it up and throw it on. So I knew we were going to be filming. Yeah. My watch box is in my office up in the front. And I was like, ah, you know what? System 51, and that's baby. What the, it's, it's automatic. A, it's like 100 hours power reserve or something yeah. crazy like that. It's all assembled by machine. 90% of the movement's plastic. Mm -hmm. It's 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 bizarre. Yeah, it's a very cool. Like 100 bucks, something like that? Yeah, it was 100 and change, I guess. I don't know, somewhere around it's there. Cool. I didn't pay for it. But it, it's just, it's neat. It's neat. It just goes to show you that, like, you know, guys who like watches that are super expensive, not so expensive. Um, and it's funny that we both wore kind of like yeah. a little bit lower on the lower end of right, what we right. normally wear, but we didn't even plan that. That's if pretty you, interesting. If you're a watch guy, I, I think you can appreciate any watch. It doesn't matter if it's 100 bucks, 50 uh, bucks, or 50,000. Unless you're a watch snob. Which we don't we don't talk to those guys. <laughs> <laughs> we do, but we just, you know, we're we're pretend, we pretend to be nice. <laughs> um, yeah, so we have a couple questions here that we have on a notepad up here in front of us. And, um, you know, let's jump right into it. Yeah. With, with one of the more in-depth questions, I believe, this is coming from Eric, um, and he asks about the shortage of certain watches and brands. Right, and mainly cool. mainly three brands. What right he's now. asking about is the sport models from Rolex, right. the sport models from Patek, and the- Stainless steel pieces from AP. And AP, the, the <clears throat> Royal Oaks and the Royal Oak Offshore. And his question is basically, do you think this is going to continue? Do you think, you know, what do you think the future of this is? And, and you know, with my first thought was the values of them, right? We, we've spoke about this right. before. You know, the values have just consistently gone up and up and up and up. And that, I think, coincides with the shortage of them. Right. But I, I must say, in the last few months, I've seen a lot of the prices kind of, they're a bit stagnant now. Yeah. I think a lot of people are starting to, They've gotten so high. If they have them, they're starting to sell them, or they're and, just and they're, them away. they're starting to come down a little bit. Um, I mean, still, 5711 selling for you know 60, 65 thousand dollars. That's over 200 percent of its value. So it's a bit crazy. But um, obviously, I've said numerous times I work in the industry. I did just attend a Rolex training, and I was told by Rolex that they increased production this year. Okay, but the demand is Still. so much higher than their production right. that that's why it's not being met. Yeah. And even if they increase production, let's just say 3%, if you spread it out through every model and every style, how many extra watches are you getting? It's really yeah. not all that many. Especially in your state or your country. Or yeah, through it's your authorized dealer. Right, and, and I think the same thing goes with Patek and with AP, whether they increase the, the production or not, I don't know that, right. but I think, my theory on this whole thing, I've been saying this for at least 15 years, and back in the day we used to call it the Daytona effect, mm -hmm. where basically, you know, the Rolex at, you know, in particular at that time, they know they can sell X amount, they're going to manufacture 
Y amount. Right. Then they're going to keep the demand much higher than mm -hmm. the supply, which is basic economics, and it's basically going to create those waiting lists and things like that. And I think these are the three brands in the industry that are doing it correctly. Well, as frustrating as it is for mm -hmm. guys like me and you and everybody else who wants a watch from right. them and again can afford it, but just can't get their hands on one without mm -hmm. having to pay exorbitantly higher than list. Well, I know Terry Stone has went out and said from Patek Philippe that he doesn't want to be a one collection brand like other brands out there, so he purposely makes less Nautilus and Aquanaut models. Because so he wants to He wants to push the, the Calatrava and the, mm -hmm. the complications and things like that. So that's why you're seeing less of those models. But then there's brands like Rolex, which we all know produces a million watches per year or more. The problem with that is- Allegedly. They, allegedly. The problem with that is it all started years and years and years ago with the Daytona, but it's become almost like a trickle down effect now where you can go into any retail space that's authorized to sell Rolex and you can't even find a date just with the steel bezel, not even a white gold bezel in 41 millimeters. And that one shocked me when you said that because to mm -hmm. me, Personally, not knocking anybody who likes them, the date just is a dog. I absolutely, there's nothing appealing about that watch to me at this for, particular day in my life. You know, ask me again in five years, I don't right. know, it'll be different. That was a watch, that was one of the few watches from Rolex that I know in the past retailers were, were discounting. They were moving them, they were moving a bit on that. You know, you're not getting really a discount on because, a sub or Because they Daytona. typically didn't sell. Right, but now, you know, it's, the people that want to get any Rolex, they're just saying, I'll just take anything. And right. it's gotten so bad that there's nothing left in stainless steel in the, the men's collection. And what's interesting with Audemars, with AP, Audemars Piguet, it, many of you may or may not know, over the last two years mm -hmm. have closed, at least here in the United States, have closed the majority of their authorized retailers. They're going boutique only. Yeah. I think last I read, they're only in six retail spaces right now in the U.S. that's not authorized right. to become where, a boutique. Where uh, two or three years ago, there was at least 40 or 50 mm -hmm. retailers. So they've closed 40, 30 or 40 retailers. I mean, one of one of the retailers I'm very friendly with um, has been an Audemars Piguet retailer since the mid to late 70s, wow. 1970s, and they got closed. So AP is moving away from being an authorized retailer to boutique only with the exception of very, very few. Right. And they will literally control their own market. And they also cap their production. So they do not make over 40,000 watches per year. That is their cap, and they're gonna stick with that for the next few years. Right. And, you know, at the end of the day, again, I'll, I'll say, I said it before, I'll say it one more time. As frustrating as, frustrating as that is for, for me, for you, and anybody who's a potential buyer, which I'm not at the moment, but for somebody who's a potential buyer of a, a steel Rolex and AP or a steel Patek Philippe, mm -hmm. it's frustrating. But that is what makes them one of the hottest brands, each one of these right. guys, one of the hottest brands in the industry right, right now. So, uh, good on you, AP, Rolex, and Patek. Yeah. Right? So, that's our thoughts, I guess. And I guess in terms of where we think if it's going to get better or worse, I mean, I, don't I, see it I, I honestly don't know. Uh, I, I think it's probably going to be like this for a little, a little while longer. If not, a bit longer. In my yeah. opinion, I don't see it changing at all. I think... I think they've they found their formula to sell every piece they make or close to mm -hmm. it, and that's what they're going to stick with. So I don't see it changing. Yeah. Yeah. So this next question is from Chris, and this is for you. But uh, what drew you to uh, micro brands? It's kind of interesting. So again, you know, getting into how I got in the watch industry, we we spoke about that at another point. Um, but I've been in the industry for for quite a long time, almost 20 years. Most of that time I spent in high end. In 2014, I left my current you know, my day job. I left my paycheck and I went off on my own as an entrepreneur, and I sold the majority of my collection. And at this point, I really wasn't familiar with micro brands, albeit maybe one or two or three, but I didn't know they were micro brands. Mm. And then what happened was I sold most of my collection to fund my new business and uh, and my life, and raised quite a bit of money. But then I still had the desire to buy watches. Sure. So I ended up falling into a couple of micro brands online. I bought a handful and uh, and I'll tell you, it's been love ever since. And you know, it does, doesn't mean I don't still love the high-end stuff, because I sure. do. And I'm actively looking for a couple of high-end pieces. Not not super high-end, but you know, non-micros. Right. And uh, I still love that. I still love the G-Shocks and the, and the swatches. 
but micros have really, um, micro brands to me are really cool. You get to deal uh, with some really fantastic people who created these brands. They're in very low production. They're very affordable. And if you choose the ones right, they're amazing quality for the price. Yeah, you're getting great materials at a much lower price point. Yeah, well, you're getting stain, you know, 316L stainless steel, sapphire crystal, 300 meter water resistance in some cases, automatic movement, albeit they are uh, usually Miotas or Seikos or right. something of that nature. But to be very honest with you, I prefer a Miota movement over, uh, over an entry level ETA, to be honest with you. And I know you guys might think I'm nuts for that, but they they fail less, mm -hmm. they're as accurate, and um, yeah, so that's how I got into them. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, um, um, What are we looking at? Jordan asked, uh, what are our thoughts on two-tone watches? Because he's he said we've been seeing more of them lately. Right. Um, I mean, Rolex even just introduced a new two-tone watch, uh, the Siege Weller. I think that you're starting to see more because you're not seeing a lot of stainless steel watches available. So people that don't necessarily want to spend four times the amount on a solid gold watch are starting to go into steel and gold. Personally, I'm really not a fan of steel and gold pieces on a steel and gold bracelet, but I think some of the steel and gold pieces out there on the strap, I kind of like. Okay. Um, and then the the new Rolex root beer, they call it, that is one of the first steel and gold pieces I've seen that I really like, and I think it works well. I don't know if it's because it's rose gold or ever rose and, right. and stainless steel. I think that works really well compared to the yellow. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of I'm in between. Okay. I don't like them. You know, simple as that. And then it's I didn't like them when they were super popular back in the late '90s and mm -hmm. all through the 2000s. That wasn't just not my style. Uh, a big part of it too is I'm pretty pale, and gold on my skin looks awful. <laughs> um, the one thing that I think there's there's one that stands out that I actually kind of dig a little, but it's not steel and gold. <coughs> it's steel and bronze, which is mm. the Oris, uh, Oris 65. Yeah. Uh, no, not the Diver 65, is it? They make... Uh, yes, the Oris Diver the, 65. And don't they make it in a chronograph? They, yes, they do, mm -hmm. I believe. But when we saw that at Basel, <clears throat> I really dig that one. For some reason, I thought it looked good, albeit I wouldn't probably... Sure. I probably wouldn't wear it. Mm -hmm. Although... If you think about it, that bronze will patina really nicely. Right. So if it was stainless steel and then that patinaed bronze, I might mm. dig that. I don't know, but personally, as a rule, it's just it's like my pet peeve of the uh, bubble on a on a crystal. Sure. I probably, at least for the foreseeable future, will not wear a bubble on my crystal, nor will I wear a two tone watch, and it's just my personal preference. I think in terms of two tone, I actually like uh, when they're brushed a bit better than high polished. Yeah, I think well. Yeah, I can a see that. AP makes some nice uh, steel and gold pieces now, and it's all brushed, and I think it works a bit better than when it's right. high polished. Yeah, it's just never been my thing, and uh, I, I can appreciate them. Just just hasn't really yeah. done anything for me. But um, but they are they are. I do feel like there are more two tones coming in. And you know, it's so funny. I've never really liked gilt dials either, and people love gilt dials. Oh, I like a gilt. Just dial. not my just not my thing. Yeah. I don't I don't I can't explain it. I don't have a reason, guys. It just <laughs> is what it is. But yeah, I have been seeing more and more versions of two tone, whether it's ever rose or whether it's gold or yellow gold or even bronze. Yeah. Uh, I do think it's making somewhat of a comeback. It's not my thing. Uh, uh, Zach, <clears throat> easy question. This is exactly what we're talking about, guys. What do you prefer, bracelets or straps? And uh, there was a short follow-up. If you like bracelets, what what type of bracelets do you mm -hmm. like? And if you like straps, what kind of straps? So I guess that's just to add on. Uh, what do you got? What do you like? You you have uh, both. You have strap I watches do. and bracelet watches. I do, but I think I'm still more drawn to straps. I think. Okay. Um, I would say probably like just like a, a distressed like leather strap. Like one of my favorite watches is I own a Panerai, mm -hmm. and I just love like a just like a beat up leather strap yeah. that you can that it can, can be age. a brand new strap, but it makes it look like it's yeah. leathered and old. Yeah, and yeah. I really like I that, that a lot. Um, yeah. I've kind of got into NATOs too. I have some vintage pieces like uh, you know pretty affordable vintage stuff that I throw in a NATO strap, and I, and I kind of like the look. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, of the two, I'd probably go more towards straps, and yeah. I would say just like a. Uh, a leather strap, and there's so many great uh, aftermarket strap makers out there. Unbelievable I mean, ones. And Brad, actually, Brad, on uh, the budding watch enthusiast for the Watch With Us channel, did a, a strap video. He did, yeah. Recently, it was a great we'll, video. Put a, we'll put a dis uh, link in the description for that. But that was pretty interesting because mm -hmm. I learned about one or two different strap companies I'd yeah, never heard of, yeah. and I actually went and bought one or two straps from them because of that video. So uh, I'll put that link in below. <clears throat> and you know, me, I, I. I 
don't think I've ever really worn a watch on a bracelet for more than a half a day, uh, ever. I'm not, I'm not a bracelet guy, to be really honest. I think, to me, it's uncomfortable. <clears throat> Um, the Especially o- in the summer. The only, yeah, I mean, to me, anytime. It's, it's funny because I have uh, Speedy. That okay. The bracelet's darn near brand new. The watch is from 2005. The bracelet's darn near brand new. Uh, and there are times I look at it and say, wow, I really should be putting this on the bracelet. I'll put it on. I'll wear it. You know, I'll put it on, come to work. All right. By noon or one o'clock, the watch is off my wrist and sitting on my desk because I don't find them comfortable. Right, right. Uh, so that's that's my rule of thumb. And as far as types of straps, it's funny because I'm like a seasonal person. So most of the summer, it's either NATO or rubber. And then once we start getting into the fall, then I find I even put my divers on a leather. Okay. I like leather straps. I. I think if I had to pick one over the other over the other, I like leather the best. Mm-hmm. But summertime, I like NATO and rubber because okay. I could just jump in the pool, jump in the ocean. I don't right. ever have to worry about taking it on and off on what I'm doing to it. So that's it's seasonal for me. Mm. Yeah. So there we go. There I also think go. it depends on the brand as well. Like there's yeah, some brands on the brand that just embrace it really well, and there's some that that don't. Like yeah. Panerai. Not really known for their bracelets. Not a big fan of their bracelets, <laughs> right, exactly. And the funny thing is, I love the way a mesh bracelet looks. Mm-hmm. I can't stand wearing them. Yeah? I can't stand wearing them. Breitling actually has a very comfortable mesh bracelet. It doesn't yeah. doesn't pull on the hair. It's lace pretty nice. It's a nice yeah. nice bracelet. Yeah, I just, uh, I think it's a weight thing for me. Mm. You know, the funny thing is too, is in this little off topic, the lighter a watch is for me, the better. And I know that goes against what a lot of watch guys right, or right, watch right. buyers feel as well. But it's just, that's what I love about this. And you it's like all, rubber. Sounds like you need to rush your meal. Yeah, well, absolutely. <laughs> if anybody wants to send one in, please A light do. watch on a rubber strap, there yeah, you go. Well, yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's funny because we all have our preferences, right? And there's no right or wrong. Right. It just is what it is, and that's, uh, that's those are mine. Those are mine, and I and I dig watch on bracelets. I wish I could wear one and feel comfortable with it. I think I think I might have to power through it for a few weeks to get <laughs> used to it. So, uh, all right, last question we're gonna use today is uh, Artie. Uh, I the can't feature read. of Torneau uh, oh, being right. that they're bought by uh, Booker. Yeah. So you know what's funny because this this is not recent. This, this is happened, news. This happened a while ago. I think it's over a year ago. So yeah. So Torneau, which was the biggest watch chain in the United States for yep. a very long time, uh, was purchased. I, I feel like it was over a year ago. I think so too. By Booker, who I believe is a German company. Uh, I believe so. They also make their own watches, Carl F. Which Booker. Carl F. Booker, right? Some but, cool stuff as yeah, well. Yeah, and, and if if I'm not mistaken, I'm just going from memory here. But Booker, I believe, was the biggest Rolex retailer in the in the world. Right. Well, Booker also didn't they release that special edition Tudor Black uh, Black Bay Bronze with the blue bezel and blue dial? I believe Possibly. that was just for Booker. Maybe, maybe. In any case, Booker purchased Torno. Uh, what I feel is a little over a year ago. Mm-hmm. And the truth of the matter is, is we were all back then. I know me in particular. I was waiting with baby breath, like, what are they going to do? Right. Right, right. My feeling on Torno for a long, long time was they kind of never changed. Right. It was they operated the same way and. 2014 as they did in, you know, 1995. (laughs) Nothing has changed with the except that they built a website and nothing else changed. And I felt like they were going the way of the dinosaur when it comes to the watch industry. Yeah. Booker comes in and buys them and we were like kind of excited, kind of interested just to see what happens. And I haven't heard a thing of it since. I think it's because Torno is so big. It's probably going to be such a major undertaking. Um, but a, a year with no news? Yeah, I don't they know. Didn't change the name, didn't change the logo. Right. Didn't... They haven't, uh, as, as far as I know, any Torno I've been to hasn't changed. The structure's all stayed the same. It hasn't been really updated. If you don't read watch blogs or follow anything watches and you just were a pedestrian person who would walk in and out of a Torno, you would never know mm-hmm. that they were bought. I so. mean, my thoughts on it, I think... I, there's promise there. I think Torno is a powerhouse, or was rather, and I think Bukura wants to kind of recapture that and refine it. Um, so, I'm yet to be seen. Yeah. But as of right now, to be honest with you, until we got the question, I forgot about it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, I, it, it, I'm thinking my thoughts on it is I have no thoughts on it because you you don't haven't heard anything about right, it. Right. Right. So hey, um, if you guys hear anything, let us know. If you if you've heard anything uh, that's that's coming down the pipe with that. 
let us know. It's because it could be interesting if something is done and done correctly. Yeah, for sure. Right on. So nice and easy. Some ask us anything questions. We, again, we have some other questions that are geared right. towards the other contributors. We're going to get them to answer them for an episode for you guys. But keep the questions coming. Um, you know, look, it's, it's just a fun way to talk about watches and uh, and get some ideas yeah, and thoughts I going. Mean, there's not many other ways that we can really interact with all of you. And this is, a, this is an easy way to do it. You can do it through many different ways our instagram right um we also kind of uh it's a little more difficult that way right so our instagram is really kind of run by ricardo mm -hmm. and if it's a personal conversation chances are it's him that's answering sure. you sure however when i do when i chime in i always put jk at the end and i'm not just kidding it's my initials right it's, <laughs> i put jk that's so you know that i'm answering you back but um yeah, comment in the video in the description is probably the best way that anybody who's in those videos are going to get some sure, feedback. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and we also have info at www.media.com. So that's kind of the best way to get the broad questions. Right. So send any questions to info at www.media.com. Um, but otherwise, send us questions on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. The questions will get funneled and put into a pool and we'll we'll answer them as they go and if you have a question for doc vale or for uh ariel or for brad at the budding watch enthusiast john carlo spanish rob ricardo me or you yeah i think i get everybody that's pretty much everybody. i know we have a couple more contributors <laughs> that are coming on so thank you guys so much for taking your time as always subscribe to this channel tell your friends about us um get a big year blint like yeah. Good, what is Goodyear Blimp? Goodyear Blimp and Watch advertise with for us. us. Yeah. yeah, we'd appreciate that. Yes, put the word out. We're having a good time doing this stuff. We hope you're enjoying it. Um, not sure when this video is going to run, but September 20th. Mm -hmm. If it, if we're the, doing our second giveaway. Second giveaway, two if watches. If you missed it, we want to do it again. We'll try and do it at least every two months or we're so. We're trying to do giveaways once every two months. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching this before September 20th, we are giving away two watches and a beautiful fountain pen. Um, all you need to do to enter is subscribe to this channel, follow us on Instagram, and sign up for our email yep. newsletter on our website at www.media.com. And each one of those will get you an entry in. If you missed it, Another eight weeks down the road, we'll be giving away more stuff. The more subscribers, the more followers, the more people we have following Watch With Us, the more the brands want to donate to the channel right. that we can give to you guys. Right. So right. that's kind of the snowball effect here. The more followers we have, the more we'll be able to give back to you guys. Exactly. So let's keep this train going. So uh, I got nothing else. You? No, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, leave a comment down below if you have a question or if you want to chime in on anything that uh, someone else asked us. And uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Until right. next time. We'll get back to you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Take it easy. See you.